Hey everybody, it's Andrew Martin coming to you with a new message on Sunday, June 19th. Happy Sunday, happy Father's Day um, to all of you fathers out there, biological or chosen or proxy or default. <laughs> However you find yourself in the role of father, I hope you have a wonderful day. It's a gorgeous day here in Seattle. You can see the glass door behind me. I mean, it's, the sun is shining. It's warm. It's clear. Yesterday was super stormy and rainy, which actually I kind of liked because it was a wonderful day for me just to take the day off to kind of unplug, to just take naps and read my book and eat really good food and watch some shows on, on Netflix and Hulu. So it's a beautiful day, and I'm super, super excited to share this video with you, and I hope that you're happy and healthy and smiling wherever you are. And today's topic is all about freedom. You know, freedom is such an interesting topic, and it's something that comes up a lot these days in my work and in, um, you know, just sort of the cultural zeitgeist and what we're experiencing right now collectively and on the planet. And in my opinion, what we're seeing play out on the world stage is everything that we have erected, either, you know, as a collective or individually, anything that we have erected within ourselves that would deny us our freedom. And here's the truth. The truth is, is that sovereign beings, our freedom is inherent in who we are. And anything that tells us otherwise is a barrier to that. And Ascension, this whole ascension process, that's exactly what this is all about. Ascension is the liberation and the freeing of ourselves through our own inner work, through our own willingness to really, really look truthfully and, and really take, you know, take a hard look, especially at the things we don't want to look at. And to really begin to understand why do we believe the things that we believe and why do we think the things that we think and why do we make the choices that we that we choose and as we begin to come into the truth and the real deep understanding of who we really are, we begin to understand that ascension is all about liberating the self. And as we liberate ourselves, we in turn liberate the collective. And it really is just one person at a time, one heart at a time, one soul at a time, one choice at a time. And as we liberate ourselves, we give people the permission or the inspiration or the motivation to begin to liberate their own lives and to begin to really free themselves. And that's really, to me, what the core of Ascension is all about. And I started thinking about this, believe it or not, from, you know, I was watching Skin Wars. I don't know if you watched that show, but RuPaul um, is a host and um, it's a body painting uh reality show, contest show, and I, I, you know, in another part of this lifetime, I was a makeup artist for a long time, and body painting was something that I always really enjoyed. So, you know, it's something that I find to be very interesting, and, you know, it's it really feeds that part of me that loves to see the creative process and watch other people, how they come to their, to their creations. But there was a, a brief moment when RuPaul was asking one of the contestants, and, you know, I won't bore you with all the details. You can watch the show if you're interested, but Basically, the arc of this person was she had finally found her voice as an artist, and RuPaul was saying, you know, don't be afraid of your freedom. Now that you found your voice, use it. And that really, really started, that touched something in me and struck a chord within me. And it was part of getting me to the point, you know, the last video that I recorded, the Time for the Truth video, which, by the way, I want to take a quick second to say thank you to everybody who took the time to send me a message or reach out and let me know um, how much that video inspired you or spoke to you or lit a fire within you because that's why I did it. You know, it really was about me saying, I got to put my money where my mouth is. And I'm always preaching to people, you know, step into your discomfort, move away from your comfort zone, do what makes you uncomfortable, move towards that because that's where your truth is. And so I finally had to do that. And for me, it was such a liberating thing to finally speak my truth and to just feel that weight lifted off of me. Number one, I was really surprised by how much I really was holding myself back through these fears of what other people would think or how they may judge me or criticize me. I had no idea that I was still so invested in the opinions and the approval of others and so I just want to say thank you because it really, really did mean a lot to me to hear from you and, and it was lovely. And freedom really is a choice. At some point, we have to be willing to say, you know what, what I know to be true inside of my heart, the urge that is calling me forth to my own freedom and to liberate and free myself that has to be at some point, that has to become the guiding principle in, in our lives. That has to become 
the thing that we really listen to and the heart will never lead us astray. The heart, I've said this before and I'll say it again and, and a million more times, the wisdom of the heart is impeccable. The guidance and the wisdom of the soul comes through the heart. The access to the higher place is via the heart. And so when we really begin to trust and to, to learn how to listen to that voice and how to hear that voice and trust to move in the direction of it is really aligning us with the greatest good that we came here to, to create and to live and the life that we came here to live and how we breathe life into it is by really listening to the heart. And so... RuPaul was telling this, this, you know, person, don't be afraid of your voice, don't be afraid of your freedom. And that was part of why, you know, that's part of the impetus that got me to the point of recording that video and really just exposing another layer of my own truth. And that's what it's all about. You know, truth is, or freedom is a choice. Freedom is a belief. Freedom starts with the understanding and the idea that I have to at some point put my own knowing and my own, you know, that voice that's just nudging me forward and nudging me forward. At some point, I have to believe that that voice is here to help me and to guide me and to lead me in a direction that I, is really aligned with the work that I came here to do in my life. You know, I'll, t I'll give you a, a quick story for those of you who, who maybe are new to my videos or Oh man, that's so good. I love coffee. Uh, for those of you who maybe haven't heard all of my videos or don't know my story, I'll give you a quick version. I was living in New York in 2005. I was, you know, at the end of my time in New York, I was very, very unhappy. I was feeling really trapped in my life. I was miserable and I was at the end of my rope. I really just had no idea. I'd lost my apartment. I was, in, you know, tens of thousands of dollars in debt. I didn't want to be, this was sort of at the end of my makeup career. I didn't want to do what I was doing anymore. I just was really lost. I had no idea where to turn. I was sleeping on my mattress in a friend's living room in their apartment in Jersey City. And it just was at the end, you know, they had, you know, I'd been there for like nine months and they had lovingly told me, Andrew, honey, we love you. But, you know, this was originally going to be, you were here for a couple of months and now it's been like nine months and you got to go. So one day I was sitting in the, in the living room drinking my coffee and everyone else had gone to work. And I just, you know, I kind of beseeched the heavens and I said, and I had a rough understanding of spirituality and I had really, you know, but I was nowhere near at the level of understanding that I am now. But at the time, I really just said, okay, I don't know what to do. I'm hel I, 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 I feel helpless and hopeless and I, I really need your help. I don't know what to do. I'm lost. And out of the blue, I heard this voice say you do realize that it doesn't have to be this difficult. You can move back to Seattle if you want to. And when I say I heard a voice, it wasn't a voice. It was a voice. It was a, it was, you know, a voice. And it was unmistakable and very clear that this voice was coming from a place that I had never really, you know, connected to before. You know, fast forward two weeks later, I had, you know made the decision to move back to Seattle. I sold everything I owned and I was back in Seattle staying with a friend in his his house. Fast forward to 2012, you know, in the meantime, between 2005 and 2012, I had, um, you know, gone back to Seattle, had been there for a few years, had started on this path of spirituality and really coming into alignment with it, had decided, you know, that I wasn't quite ready. I had some stuff happening in my own life um, that really kind of veered me in a direction that, you know, I just, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready for freedom. And so I went back down to San Francisco, then later was in LA. 2012, I'm in LA. I was in the exact same place. I was miserable. I was at the end of my rope. I was in a life that I didn't really want. I didn't know how to get out of it. I was just really lost. And so I was painting my apartment. I was painting the bathroom in my apartment one day in, in LA. And I was just about ready to start the final wall of the, of the bathroom. And I heard that same voice say, you do realize that as soon as you finish painting this bathroom, it's going to be time to leave, don't you? And I was like, okay, that's it. I, I, I can't pretend anymore that this, you know, that this is not happening. And it stunned me. It stunned me to the core. It shook me. It rocked me to my foundation. 
because I knew very clearly that this was the same voice I had heard in New York. It was that I, I, I unmistakably knew that I had not been making it up, that this wasn't something I had imagined, that it was very, very clear that it was time for me to make a really big decision. And that decision, oh, by the way, if you see these little rainbow things, they're not orbs. I have some sun catchers in the window, and so you may see them sort of twinkling across my face. Um, and so I went and I sat in the living room, just kind of speechless and stunned, and I made the decision. I said, okay, whoever you are, whatever it is that you know that I clearly don't know at this point, whatever it is that you see that I don't see, if you get me back to Seattle, if you get me a job in an apartment, I promise I will do whatever it is that you're asking me to do. The next day, I quit my job. I had zero plan of what I was going to do and how it was going to happen. Three weeks later, I was back in Seattle with a job, with a job and an apartment, and it just happened like that. The point of this is, is that the universe, ourselves, our guides, our angels, our higher selves, however you want to classify or quantify the guidance that we receive and that we always, always have access to, it is always moving us in the direction of our greatest freedom. It is always moving us in the direction of the work that we came here to do. Freedom is a choice. Freedom is a belief. For me, at that moment, freedom was trusting that this voice that had shown up for the second time in my life, and now I know I can look back and see, you know, other ways that this voice was guiding me. By the way, it was Archangel Michael. Um, when I finally realized that this was not a trick, that this voice was really pushing me in the direction of what I came here to do, Freedom comes from when we align ourselves to our divine purpose, when we align ourselves to what we came here to do, because this is the thing, divine purpose isn't something that's thrust upon us, it is something that we agree to. Freedom is a belief and a choice that there can be something greater than what we have, that our happiness does not lie out here. Happiness and freedom and power do not lie outside of us, they all begin internally first. You know, there's all those stories of, and I'm fascinated by these stories, of, you know, people who are in the prison system and they're in there for really, really long periods of time or they're chronic, you know, chronic prisoners. Um, they, they go in and out of the system for whatever reason. And oftentimes you will hear them say how they are terrified of being on the outside because it's too much. You know, it's too much freedom. It's too much choice. It's overwhelming to them. And they oftentimes find ways to put themselves back in the system because it is easier for them to live a life where, you know, they're told when to go to bed and they're told when to get up. They're told when to eat and when to go to the bathroom and when it's free time and nap time and lights out and all that. And I get that. I understand the illusion of security that presents itself via a life that has been constructed by somebody else for us and we feel like we're just sort of plugged into it, it feels easier. It feels more convenient. It feels more comfortable because I can just sort of turn my brain off and I don't necessarily have to make the big decisions in terms of where is my freedom. You know, there's also that that um, fable, and I don't know if this is true or not, but I love this story and it's the, the idea behind it that I think is important. So, you know, please don't message me and tell me that this story is fake and that I should do my homework because that's not the point. The point of the story is, you know, there, there's that, that story, whether it's true or not, about, you know, elephants who are raised in captivity from birth. And when they're a little baby elephant, they have a rope tied around their leg. And, you know, that's what keeps them. It's like their leash. And then as they grow up, into a mature, you know, several tons of, of an animal, they still have the rope tied around their ankle and they could snap that rope like that. And I've talked about this way, way back in other videos. I talked about this story, but they could easily snap that rope and run free. But because they have, born, they have been born into a reality that tells them that they are not free, because they have been born into a reality that tells them that this rope is more powerful than they are, when the rope is nothing. I mean, that's nothing, right? An elephant and a rope? They have been born into this belief that this is what the reality is, and they just have to accept it. 
And so they never try to break the rope and never try to break free. Man, if that is not a perfect fucking metaphor where so, for where so many of us are. And where I was and where I have been so much of my life. And even up till last week when I recorded that video, It's Time for the Truth. I didn't even realize how much of me still believed that it was very important for me to place, you know, weight upon what other people thought and whether or not other people agreed or approved or validated what I put out there. So freedom is a belief. It starts as a belief. And then as we begin to understand it, then it becomes a choice. And it does not matter where we are in our lives. We always have a choice. Now, sometimes that choice feels very small. Sometimes that choice is just deciding to accept whatever it is that we've got going on in our life as the current version of reality and deciding that we're going to find a way and ask for a way to present itself to us where we can begin to change that. So I get it. Oftentimes the freedom choice is really, really small, but it's still a choice. Freedom comes when we begin to interrogate our own experience. Freedom comes when we really are willing to look inside and say, okay, you know what? The choices that I have made and the things that I have done in my life, it is required for us to accept that on some level, we had a hand in creating all of it. Now, whether that choice and whether that decision to create it came from a subconscious, a conscious, or a superconscious level, you know, we can pick the threads apart and we can, you know, we can split hairs all we want. But on some level, all of us create everything that we experience, whether as an individual or as a collective. And ascension and the events that are happening on the planet right now are all pointing us in the direction where we have given our freedom away. And whether we give it away by default because we're born into a system that we don't realize that we're actually a really fucking power, powerful elephant and the thing that's holding us down is just a flimsy rope, or whether it's a choice that we consciously make through, you know, decisions to hide or to retreat or to place importance upon what other people think. Freedom begins when we begin to interrogate ourselves and really look within and ask the questions. Freedom is understanding that oh, I can actually choose my emotions. Freedom is saying, oh, I don't have to create from fear or doubt or insecurity. Freedom says I can allow those things to emerge and present themselves to me, but that I do not have to own them or claim them. I can let them go. Freedom is a belief. It is a choice. Freedom is a decision. And anybody or anything that tells you that your freedom lies in the hands of another is feeding you a line of bullshit. So what I want you to begin to ask yourself and the questions that we need to begin to ask ourselves is where have we surrendered our freedom? Because we have chosen to believe that another person has more power than we do. And a lot of this is coming to light through the political upheaval that's happening in this country and around the world. And we're really beginning to understand like, why do I believe all of a sudden that just because you've told me that you are qualified and just because you've crafted a persona that tells the world that you have the best interests of everyone at heart and that you're the one to do the job, you know what? You're just another fucking person like I am. How are you any more qualified to make decisions for me than I am for you? And through this work, I can guarantee you that there is not one single person on the planet who does not have moments of fear and doubt and insecurity and uncertainty and wondering if what they're doing is the right thing, wondering how they got here and what's next and all of those questions that we all grapple with, every single one of us has those active within us. So when I understand that we are all equal from the perspective of all that is and that no one is more inherently power that, powerful or free than another, we begin to really ask the tough questions. Where have I agreed unwittingly or, you know, sort of blindly agreed to let another make my choice of freedom for me? And why have I made those decisions? And where else in my life, where do I say yes when I don't want to say yes? Where do I say no when I don't want to say no? Where do I continue to show up to things and circumstances in my life that I really don't want to show up to anymore? 
And I'm not saying that these decisions are easy to make. The work that is required to free and liberate ourselves is the toughest fucking work we're ever going to do. I posted this on my Facebook and my Instagram yesterday, you know, 51% love and light, 49% fire and brimstone. Don't fucking push it. This idea that somehow we should just all be airy, fairy, happy, love and light, and that everything will just magically work out is total bullshit. I call it a spiritually transmitted disease. If you are only doing the work of the happy, airy, fairy, you know, unicorns and glitter... You're only doing half the work and you're never really going to truly free yourself. You're never really going to truly heal yourself until you are willing to sit with the shadow. Until we are willing to look at the ugly, nastiest aspects of ourselves, our demons that live within us. Until we are willing to stand up to them, look them in the eye, stare them down with love in our heart, we will never truly be free. Mastery, freedom, liberation, true power comes from being able to look the darkest aspects of who we are in the face and love them anyway. And as I learn how to do that within, then I am able to look without on the world stage and say, you know what? These people who I would be so afraid of and who present themselves as monsters in my reality, they're no more powerful than I am. They're no more powerful in the true sense of the word than anybody else. It's just we have been taught to believe that the rope that's tied around our ankle is stronger than we are. And that's what they don't want us to know, is that our power is inherent in who we are. The fact that we are here, alive, and breathing on the planet right now means that we are powerful beyond measure. We are the creator spark in a human body. And that goes for everybody. If you're alive and you're breathing and you're walking around on this planet, you have the creator spark active within you. And creator does not judge any of its creations as lesser than, greater than, good or evil, bad or good. It just is. And as we begin to really interrogate within ourselves, where have I given my freedom away? Where do I continue to allow myself to be imprisoned? If we're worried about what other people are going to think of us, we're not going to be free. If we are trying to control outcomes by, you know, crafting and sort of hoping that we can present this really, you know, it's sort of like this jazz hands version of ourselves like, oh, look at the pretty stuff over here. No, don't look at that. I don't want you to see that. If we're so worried about people seeing the things that we feel are so unlovable within us, we're never going to be free. If we are continuing to show up and say yes in our lives to things that we just don't want to say yes to anymore, that is not freedom, people. Freedom begins when we are willing to take a really, really hard look at all of who we are to take responsibility for all that we have created and all that we have experienced because on some level we have said yes to it. And freedom says, I can love it without condoning it. Freedom says, I don't have to judge it to change it and transform it. In fact, when I judge it, I join it in that lower energy. When I judge it, I attach myself to it. When I love it unconditionally, it's the same thing with my demons inside. When I love them unconditionally and forgive them, forgive myself, this is a key part of it is forgiveness. When I am willing to forgive myself for having listened to those scary voices all of these years because I just didn't know and now that I know I can do something different. When you know better, you do better. But until I am able to look at all aspects of myself and love them unconditionally, I'm never going to heal them. And that's what it is. When I look at my demons and I say, you know what, I love you and I forgive you for being big and scary because you're just doing what you came here to do. But I'm not going to join you in the darkness. I'm not going to join you in the scary stuff. I'm going to stand here and I'm going to love you from my place of alignment and love and compassion. And I'm going to invite you to the light. When we look at the things on the planet and in our lives and in our world that scare us and, and we seem like, you know, we just want to destroy it and condemn it and get rid of it, we join it in that frequency. But when I stand here and I say, you know what, I know you're coming for me. I know that you have the, best, the worst intentions for me. You think that you're doing a good thing. You think that where you're coming from is the best idea because we're always creating from our highest level of consciousness and awareness that we have access to. But when I refuse to join you in that condemnation of life and I say, I love you and I have compassion for you no matter what you say or do, immediately I invite you to join me there. And that's how we heal it. We raise it up to love and compassion rather than joining it in destruction and condemnation and judgment. 
So that's where it begins. That's how it starts, is we have to be willing to look inside and say, where have I continued to deny myself my freedom? Where have I continued to judge myself and condemn myself and, you know, feel bad about myself? Where have I withheld love and compassion and forgiveness from myself? That's where your work starts. And as you are able to find love and compassion and acceptance for all of the aspects of who you are, to give them a seat at the table and say, even the ugliest, nastiest, funkiest part of myself has the right to be as it is and sit at the table with me, and yet I will not join it in its darkness... That's when we really truly begin to experience freedom. Because freedom says, hey, if I'm willing to face down my own demons, there is nothing outside of me that I can't handle. Because whatever is outside of me is only an outpicturing, only a manifestation of what I've got going on inside. War within, war without. As above, so below. So begin to ask yourself, where have I continued to say no when I wanted to say yes? Where have I continued to deny myself the truth of who I am? Where am I unwilling to turn and face whatever it is within me that's asking for my attention? And until I am willing to give a voice to all of those aspects of me, they're going to continue to derail me. Because I trust that the universe, my higher self, my guides, my, you know, my, intu my intuition is always working for me and always moving me in the direction of my freedom. And until I really begin to trust that, I'm going to continue to sabotage myself. These aspects of ourselves that we feel are always tripping us up and messing things up, they're not here to harm us. They don't wish us ill. It's just they have a job to do. And that job is to get us to, to the point where we can turn and face them and not back down from our place of truth and alignment. I think that's it. I think I got all my notes. So thank you, RuPaul. <laughs> <laughs> for that inspiration. And yeah, begin to ask yourself those questions. Where am I holding myself prisoner? And here's the thing, people. It's going to be a lifelong process. You know, you're always going to find a new layer to peel back. That's the beauty of it. Is just when I think I've gotten as free as I can, there's another level of freedom awaiting me. But it all starts in here. And it all starts with understanding that anyone that tells me they can free me and give me sort of a shortcut around the work, they can't free me. They're selling me some fucking snake oil. Anyone that tells me that they have the answer and they know better than I do, sure, listen to them with an open mind and an open heart. But the open heart is the key. If it doesn't feel right, it's not right. If, it, if something feels funky and off, and I don't know why, but I just don't trust what you're telling me, that's the voice you want to listen to. Anybody that tells me that if I give them the keys, they will free me, no, I already got the keys. I came with them in, in built into who I am. My freedom and my sovereignty is guaranteed as a spark of the creator in a human body. And the human experience is all about coming in with that intact. And then we live our lives and we continue to give our freedom and our power away because we just don't know better, right? We don't know that the rope that's tied around our ankle isn't stronger than, isn't really stronger than we are. And then at some point we begin to wake up and we begin to ask these questions and we begin to interrogate what's going on in here. And that's when we begin to unlearn fear. We begin to unload all the bullshit. We begin to believe and understand and really, really recognize that my freedom was here all along. It's the fucking Wizard of Oz. Just click your heels. You've had the power all along. And my job is to help you see that. My job is to help you realize that. Thank you as always for watching. Go to my website, check me out there. I've got a whole list of services. You know, I've really been getting the guidance lately that I'm supposed to be sort of integrating them all into one service. So you may see my service offerings change. However, right now, they're all there. They're all available. I know that in 60 minutes or less, I can help you begin the work of unraveling the sweater. you got to start pulling that thread. I think of the Weezer song, if you want to destroy my sweater. So that's it. Go to my website. Check me out there. You can find all my social media stuff there. Book a session. I know I can help you. Have a fabulous Father's Day. Have a wonderful equinox and or solstice and full moon. I love you. Thank you for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.